My name is Hina Sheikh, the School of Public Health, Malkin Institute. My name is Zada Khan, I'm in the School of Public Health, Department of Prevention and Community. My name is Nadi Kali, also the School of Public Health. My name is Christine Sedstrom, also the School of Public Health. Our project was funded by uh, the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, we got a grant from the Office of Women's Health to look at uh, what's going on when it comes to female genital mutilation or cutting within the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, so the DMV. My focus was on healthcare providers, specifically their perceived needs of women who have undergone FGMC. I also looked at what healthcare providers uh, thought other healthcare providers would need in this toolkit to, to better help care for survivors when they came in for appointments or for referrals and those sorts of things. Due to increased migration um, around the world, really, now there is more uh, knowledge, awareness of FGC um, in countries in the Americas, Oceania, um, uh, Europe. We were able to see, okay, what are the gaps? What are what are other health professionals in other settings being told or being advised in terms of how to respond appropriately to women with certain needs who have who have experienced FGC? And then also, are there any tools on Line available for them as for, for the survivors themselves. What we're seeing is that there is a lack of an evidence-based approach, which is a gap we hope to fill, certainly within North to serve North America, but elsewhere as well. There have been a lot of negative experiences that uh, you know unfortunately occurred to these women where their healthcare providers either um, you know express certain levels of shock or dismay when seeing them, which kind of served as a barrier for them to accessing health care uh, later on. And there's a lot of stigma around FDMC, and so that also creates you know, the need uh, uh, reluctance among survivors to actually seek out health. They've experienced it as, as a traumatic experience as, as children. So it's an adverse childhood event, event that sort of manifests through their life, throughout their experiences in life, whether it's physical health or mental health. And uh, a more trauma-based care approach is needed for these women. On their end, survivors were happy that their voices were heard, and they wanted to be part of this. They, they appreciated the fact that they get to say what they need. You know, FGM is in the media, everyone's talking about it, but no one's asking them what they need. And so that was actually one of the most rewarding components of that. Being on this research team has like, given me a lot of experience with qualitative research, which I had no experience with prior to this. So just being able to work on like doing interviews with real people and like kind of structure an interview where you're really like set on trying to find some uh, certain like conversation points and then also how to code and like really analyze qualitative data is pretty difficult. So. And I would agree with that, especially um, with qualitative research. Me working in a team with that was very. I, I loved it. I love my team members. <laughs> so just being able to um, analyze those codes and to be able to see what we agreed on or disagreed on and being able to build off from that so we can get a better understanding as a team. Um, it's a very unique gender-related, gender-focused issue that I, is important to me. Um, I wear two hats in this project. I'm the project manager, but I also was able to be a researcher along with my colleagues. And so I got first-hand quality research experience which I didn't really have before so it's been an awesome experience um, in that way um, coding as well as transcription you know um, these things take time and I think the biggest one big takeaway is qualitative data collection takes time also our mentor uh, PI on the study Dr. Karen McDonald was definitely a uh, driving force for us as a group to sort of really understand this issue and um, that was a great part of the project is that mentorship. And it is taxing um, when it's heavy. It is yeah. heavy. Um, the, the interviews with survivors especially, um, uh, for many of the women it was the first time they've ever, ever spoken to anyone about their experience and so to be the one to hear them and, and uh, you know, you know, just being honored to be part of that experience uh, uh, and just see them actually uh, 
the relief and the, the sense of, you know, just the burden being lifted after they speak about it, talk about it, and also the fact that they appreciated being heard. That was very uplifting. Just seeing where we are, we're about um, one, almost two years into the project, and it's a three-year project, and so it's lovely to see the progress that we've made.